Hi there and welcome to this debate. I'm Bill Clark from Niobe and Cambridge and I'm with Patrick Stevenson. We're going to talk about disease control in wheat, look back at the last couple of years and try and look forward to 2015 and see what is going to happen in 2015. So Patrick, where better to start? Probably Septoria. So do you want to tell us what happened last year? Well, if it was possible to have a plague of septoria, it was a plague of septoria last year. Um, most people saw uh, the writing on the wall as we came through spring with tremendous levels in the lower canopy. The leaves were dying back. We got the good weather to foster it. And also, we were very keen with the nitrogen. So mm. we were creating a real canopy that was just going to... If, if the weather was right, we had all the right ingredients as we approached the end of March for it to be a plague. So what were people thinking about T1 and T0 sprays then? Yeah, the big thing uh, at that time, uh, everybody's really bought into T0 now, uh, certainly on the early drilled or conventionally drilled timing. You know, the 28-year mean data we have that comes out of Morley, you know, is... is is com confirms basically this 0.1.2 yield response but I think for those people actually in the field you see it as a building block mm. the, the starting point of the program going forward and did people manage to get the T noughts on okay timings for T1 um, we, yes the timings the problem we had with timing was really growth stage identification yeah and uh, it, it they you could glibly say that the 23rd of every month is an approximate of a, a, a leaf emerging. I shall, uh, I shall shoot you there. Yeah, yeah. Let's just look at this, because this is what um, the problem is for a lot of people with the T1 timing. We're, we're targeting leaf 3, which is normally emerging around that gross stage 32 timing. And some people say, well, but if you look at the contribution to yield from that final leaf 3, it's only about 10%. So I think people don't take it seriously enough. And the other problem is, if you look at a growth stage diagram, it, it looks easy. Mm -hmm. But at growth stage 32, and this plant's at growth stage 32, what you have is a main stem and two tillers here, and the actual leaf three that's emerging is quite different between the, the tillers and the main stem. So if you're waiting for this leaf three to come out on the main stem, leaf three on, on these um, other tillers are way behind. And the same thing happens when the main tiller only has leaf three showing. You suddenly find that these other tillers, the actual leaf three hasn't even, even shown. So I think that's where the T1 timing if you haven't had a T naught on, is absolutely critical. Um, but so this target for targeting leaf three can be really, really difficult. And I think if you get it wrong, what can happen is this. So this is we've just moved on here to growth stage 37. So the flag leaf's just halfway out. This is leaf three, and in this case, something went wrong. The tip of leaf three's got septoria, and it's overlapping these emerging top leaves. And I think for some people last year where they didn't get their T1 on right, what happened was this. You get to the flag leaf timing, the flag leaf spray has gone on, it's given you good control here on the flag, but look at leaf two. All the leaf two layer is dead. And that's what happened with people who used a straight triazole. Those who had moved on to the newer chemistry, this is from a trial where the flag leaf spray went on perfectly well timed, you can see here though, the SDHI triazole mix, in this case, this is a Dexar, it's got two green leaves. So a comparison of a triazole and a triazole SDHI, you've lost this eradicant activity. And this has arisen because of that difficulty with the T1 timing. So this problem goes all the way back to the T1. So T1 timing, it might seem quite flexible but I think in a year like last year where we had very high disease mm. it becomes really important almost almost but not quite as important as the flag leaf spray so I think T1 timing is something I mean what about product choice are you a straight chlorothalonil or is triazole chlorothalonil yeah the big issue we have going through the <coughs> the first season or early season choice of products is 
how susceptible is the variety to, to yellow rust mm. and how much do you need some element of control in there? So if you were looking at, for instance, uh, uh, seed dressing that had been put on in the autumn, mm. then you've got a slight change of, uh, of emphasis that might be required at T0 and that would bring in cloth alum as a major player. If you haven't had that and you've got a variety that has a, a susceptibility there, then you're bringing in a triazole mm. as well into that side of the programme. So the thing we, we, we forget now is um, these are relatively inexpensive sprays mm. at that mm. time. To do what can be a very comprehensive job and a really good foundation mm. for the way we move forward from there. So I, I, I think that was an important part of it. The, the other part which... Um, you and I can be very uh, high and mighty about, but if, if we delay the drilling, mm. this problem of catching the right leaf at the right leaf layer time becomes a lot easier yeah. because we lose leaves off the total produced by the plant and the identification becomes easier. Timings become very close together, so mm. you know a missed time T0 can actually be a T1, yeah. and the world is happier. Unfortunately, when it's rained for four or five inches in October and nobody can mm. drill, then mm. you and I will be hiding. Yeah, but uh, that's that. So go back to your triers old choice for T1 then. So you've you've, I mean we'll come on to yellow rust later, but so you've you've controlled your yellow rust to an extent. So it doesn't really matter which triers old you use, but you're in a septory situation. So, yeah. what, I mean, do you have a preferred triazole for your, for your early spray, your T1, with Bravo? Um, if I'm going at the early part at T1, I would tend to be using an epoxyconazole, which will be uh, in a mix usually with another product mm. uh, to go at that particular time. So you're looking at eye sport and foot-based disease uh, complexes that are there. Um, I appreciate that uh, prothioconazole does a very good job at the foot-based yeah. diseases at the time as well. Um, so y your options between are probably between those two at T1, mm. and it's whether you know you, you go for a formulated product that's available, or you wish to choose. You, you feel the risk isn't there for ice at that particular moment in time. So your septoria, then it's got to be at the, the, the upper end of the uh, triazole ability to at least protect against. Uh, septoria. And what about your STHI component? That was interesting last year. Uh, that would be the first year since the arrival of the new batch of STHIs where there is a reasonable amount of evidence out there to say that they were big contributor mm. at that stage. And I think if we look at uh, why they contributed, again we're coming back to timing. Mm. The actual STHI was bailing you out mm. from an area you may have made in yeah. timing, which as we're well aware, that's the season. Mm. If it's windy all April mm. and you're struggling to get something on, then these are where the new chemistry appears to give us a little bit of an advantage. Because some people thought the, S the, I mean, as you say, the STHIs were bailing us out, and the triazoles alone were pretty poor. I mean, was that your experience? Um, at that stage, no. I think what really put the triazoles under pressure was the wet May. Mm. So I think at the, the stage going from T naught to T one we were reasonably in control of the vehicle moving mm. forward. But unfortunately, what then happened, the pressure that built, and uh, I, I would be the, the first to uh, say that I think the effectiveness now, even of our best triazoles mm. in the field situation, has to have slipped. Mm. Um, 2013, dry year, we could have sprayed water on probably and it would have yeah. got a, a similar yield. Well, it's, it's interesting that the performance of the triazoles we know has been slipping for probably a decade. It's worth probably just looking at the way this is represented. This is from the HECA dose response curve. And I've just taken one curve. I've, I've taken Proline here. So this is increasing the label dose from zero up to twice the label dose. And obviously the more you apply, the lower the disease that curve. That's the same curve, and each of these is a separate data set. So you can see at the full dose, on average, you're getting about 60% control. But in a bad situation, perhaps where it's more eradicant, you're down here, 30, 40, 50% control. If you get it spot on, you can get 90% control of septoria just with the triazole. But the, the danger is when you're applying it, you're almost always applying it in some kind of eradicant mode. So you're more likely to be below that line than you are above it. And if you contrast that, the straight triazole, 
with, in this case, the STHI epoxy mix, a Dexar, look at the shape of the curve. It's much, much different. It's very, very high levels of control from these lower doses. And when you get to the full dose, you've got a very tight um, sort of collection around that line. But you're up in the 80, 90 percent control. So that's the difference in terms of um, control of septoria under high disease pressure. You're, you've got more reliability with an STHI mm -hmm. triazole mix, and just relying on the triazoles alone really can be, well, it can be very dangerous in a year like we've just come through with very high disease pressure. So I think the, the triazoles, there's still a, still a efficacy there if you use them well. As you say, if you use them in a more protectant mode, you've got much more chance of getting high control levels. Um, but when you're under pressure and you need very high levels of control, particularly in eradicant mode, you've really got to, you've got to be moving to this STHI chemistry. Well, if you flip that up and actually look at it in a different way and look at the level of control you get by increasing your dose, you get a curve like this. And you can perhaps think, well, if I'm using near a full dose, I'm getting pretty much about 60% control just from the trials. Now, that's pretty good.